Jack Cooley and the number 21 Notre Dame Fighting Irish are in town and looking to improve their standing in the Big East. Gideon Bats and Providence have been hot as of late and are looking for their fourth straight win. It's Notre Dame and Providence coming up. of fortune. Hello and welcome to Providence. I'm Eamon McEnany. Happy to be joined once again by the former Rutgers head coach Bob Wenzel. And Bob, in our matchup today, a pair of teams looking to keep a good thing going. No, no doubt about that. Two weeks ago, I would have thought that this was a blowout game. But since that time, Providence has played very, very well. And of course, Notre Dame might be tired. Every time they play, they play <laughs> overtime games. Time now to take a look at our one-on-one -on -one and Bob, a matchup with two of the best big men in the conference. Yeah, Jack Cooley is consistent as you can be. He's got 17 double-doubles on the year. He's our rebounding machine. You can see his double-double numbers right there. He's terrific against everybody he plays against. Lately, however, Kadeem Batts has been great. Two games, 25 and 24 in his last two. He's an lane player. He understands that the mid-range game is his thing and he's been very good lately. And he'll be looking to slow down Jack Cooley and help the Friars win their first game over Notre Dame since 2004. We might be in store for Providence history. We return with the lineups and the tent after this. Today's Big East basketball game is brought to you by PNC Bank, for the achiever in you. Wendy's new right price, right size menu with big tastes you can't find anywhere else. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by Puerto Rico, it's about time you discovered why Puerto Rico does it better. Good energy in the dunk as the Friars look to make it four straight. That would be the first time they've won four straight since 2004. They host number 21, Notre Dame. Time now to take a look at the starting lineups. First for the visitors from South Bend. In the backcourt, Eric Atkins leads the way. He's the 60-minute man and then some. He's played over 100 minutes in the last two games. Grant has led the Irish in scoring in the last three. Connaughton, a New England native, returns home. Tom Knight and Jack Cooley, as we mentioned, coming off his 30th career double-double. They are 20-5, and five, the Providence Friars. Coming off a come-from-behind victory on the road against South Florida. Vincent Council can make prior history today. We'll have more on that. Dunn, the freshman, has emerged as a lockdown defender. Cotton leads the conference in scoring. Bats has 49 in his last two games, and Henton can fill it up at a moment's notice. We have mentioned that this has been a one-sided series. Certainly recently, Notre Dame has won 16 of 25 meetings, including nine straight. The last Providence win back in February of 2004. That was the last time they won four in a row, the last time they went to the NCAA tournament. So, Bob, you that, add that all up. 
you get a building that is looking for a win. No doubt about it. And two years ago, 94-93, I believe that was the uh, the time where Marshawn Brooks had 52 against Notre Dame. So we might see some fireworks today. Both teams might have pulled the goalie in that one early. The <laughs> Irish are, of course, coached by Mike Bray. He has won 20 games or more now, seven straight years. He got number 20 against DePaul. And for Providence, Ed Cooley in his second season here with the Friars, looking to get over 500. Notre Dame in the road black with the green numbers. Green and black socks. Providence in the home white. It'll be Cooley jumping against Bats. Cooley tonight, the Irish go to work first. Dunn comes out on Atkins. Interesting matchup. Dunn, the freshman, on Atkins. Dunn, really, a small forward on this team, but he's a terrific defender. They don't want to get caught in foul trouble guarding Atkins. Here's the matchup. Cooley backing down bats. He goes to the hook. Too strong. Council with the rebound. Take a look at Council's shoes, huh? Wow. Great assist guy. Knocking on the door to break a Providence assist record, right? Cooley can't hit, but Bats does. Same exact shot, same exact spot, different result. Bob, as you mentioned, Vincent Council, two assists away from tying Ernie DiGregorio for all-time at Providence. If he gets three, he will become the all-time leader. Connaughton passes up the look at the three. Now gets it over to an open night. Stops and hits. Boy, I'll tell you. This kid is unbelievable. He was practically playing zero minutes until Scott Martin got hurt, and he has come on Big East games. He averages nearly seven a game, four rebounds. They've reinvented themselves, and Knight has been a big part of that. Scott Martin dealing with knee injury. He is out indefinitely. Veteran outside threat. This is his seventh game that he has missed because of the injury. That's the turnaround. He hits, he's two for two. Holy mackerel. That's two for two, 25, 24 in his last two. Can you say second team all Big East? There's Connaughton off the screen, the bounce pass, and there's a throw down. Providence's last game instructive. They go down to South Florida. They scored 20-something points in the first half and 51 in the second half. It's like they were two different teams. <laughs> Done to Cotton. Defenses weren't ready for the noon tip. <laughs> Smallest guy in the floor, they lobbed to him. The Big East leading scorer. Usually he does his damage from the three-point line. Leading the Big East in that category with just over three a game. Knight's been the go-to guy here early. Grant thought about it. Now 10 on the shot clock for the Irish. Another bounce pass down to Knight. Knight and Bats playing one-on-one -on -one down low. Well, I'll tell you what, this is big stuff for the Irish to get production from him early. He's at his average already. He is three for three from the field. We are all even at six. Bats gets free. No help. Pick and roll. Guys asleep. Jumping out very high on that pick and roll is Cooley. They let Bats go the last couple of trips. Can't blame Notre Dame if they have a little less energy than normal. Five overtimes against Louisville, then overtime against DePaul. Atkins off the screen. Loses his footing and misses the shot. Bats with the rebound. Council wants the high pick and roll again. There it is. This time Cooley stays with Bat, so it's Henton. In and out. Cotton runs down the loose ball. They're quicker. Providence much quicker than Notre Dame in the early going here. They're trying to isolate Bats on the block. Here's, here's Cotton. Kick out to Dunn for three. Bullseye! <laughs> McDonald's All-American out of New London, Connecticut. Jacks up the volume here at the dunk. Oh. 
Yeah, it's been passive here early. Now Conaty. Knight spins to the baseline. Looking for Cooley. Conaton runs it down, gets it to Atkins. He's open. Short. Council looking to push. The bounce pass to Dunn. Conaton got a piece and they say it went off Dunn last. Hitting bats, 49 points combined in his last two games. He is on fire early here at home. Providence up by five on number 21, Notre Dame. Lead looking for their fourth straight win, and Bob Kadeem Bats picking right up where he left off. Well, I'll tell you what, this guy's been great in the last couple of games, and right now, the jump hook is his favorite move. Notice how he waits for no double team to come. They may have to start doubling him because he is on fire. He is our Denny's value player. You look at the last two games, 25 against Cincinnati, 24 against South Florida. That's doing something because Cincinnati has a ton of guys protecting the rim on that team. Scoring big in the paint against them is really something. Last touch by Bats. Also for Providence on the offensive end, Vincent Council has already picked up two assists, so he is tied with Ernie D on the all-time list at 662. One more, and he becomes the all-time leader. But now it's Providence on defense. So far, Grant not involved at all, and he's their best offensive player in Big East games. Knight looking for Cooley. Cooley turns around with five on the shot clock. Knight drives, draws contact, and he'll go to the line. Our officials today, Jim Burr, Mike Stewart, and Gene Steratore. Knight active early. Early in the season, Knight was an afterthought. Scott Martin gets hurt, as we mentioned. He comes in to play. They go with a three-out, two-in instead of their normal four-out, one-in. And he is developing more and more confidence every single game he plays. First two starts, Bob, as you mentioned, South Florida and getting Villanova 17 and 10, so he was ready to go as we take a look at Scott Martin. Scott Martin, a sixth year senior, transferred from Purdue, was averaging nearly 11 points a game when he went down. He's had that knee surgically repaired twice already. Cooley gets the offensive rebound and the putback. That is his calling card. <laughs> that is classic Cooley right there. Best offensive rebounder in the league, and he's not a leaper. Position player. Lee Goldsberg has checked in for the Friars. He sets a screen up top for Cotton. Now this is done. Bats is out. Look for Cotton to get going. Instead, it's Council with the pull-up that's too strong. Henton comes up with the rebound. Cotton gets a good look straight away. He is not going to miss that. Deadly. S. Villanova. He made one with two seconds to go to beat the Wildcats. Big East leading scorer, 20 a game. Well, here's Grant. I was content to pound it inside. Cooley goes back to the hook. That's off. And with another, another rebound. gets it back from Henton. Waits for everyone to get set. Irish defense is passive. They're playing contained style, and they're not aggressive enough. The aggressive block goes right back to Dunn, then Henton another look at a three. That's well off. Dunn another rebound. You see the energy the freshman provides. Big crowd here. This might be the best of Ed Cooley's crowds this year. Close out on Cotton, he kicks it out to Dunn. Dunn up and under, can't hit. Cooley with another rebound. The backcourt's been quiet for Notre Dame, but Cooley gets loose. Henton gets over, can't stop him. He has four. Take a look at the Irish right now. A little fatigue has set in. Mike Gray has gone to 2-3 zone. First possession of 2-3 zone so far in the game. Saying this week he might do it because of their backcourt, also to preserve some energy. Seven players do most of the damage for Notre Dame. 
Under 10 to shoot for Council on the Friar. Spins. Henton can't bring in the pass, and it's a turnover. First turnover of the ball game. We see some of those fresh legs coming in for Notre Dame, but now let's take a look at our Big East leaders brought to you by PNC Bank, and we take a look at some of the leading assist men. Well, the these, this is in Big East play, so Council leads it. And of course, we have Grant in the game, too, the third guy. Siva, Carter Williams, and Collins. In games overall, Carter Williams leads from Syracuse. Lots of good passers. When you take the combination of Grant and Atkins, they average almost 12 assists a game between the two guards. So, a whole new look here for both teams. Grant gets it over to August, the freshman from Massachusetts, can't hit, and Sherman gets called for over the back. Well, what we have right here is platooning post players. August is in with Sherman. They like to do this to keep Knight and Cooley playing well together and a bit rested. When we return, we'll take a look at a Friar legend, our colleague Dickie Simpkins, being honored here at the dunk. That when we return to Providence. Coming in, Hall of Fame induction weekend, and this weekend, Dickie Simpkins, the Friars center back from 91 to 94, being honored. You see him holding the trophy there as they captured the Big East title at the Garden. There's a look at Dickie Simpkins, who's now in our field of work. Of course, he went on first round draft pick of the Bulls, where championships were old hat, winning three there with Michael and Phil Jackson and Scottie Pippen. But what a career he had here for the Friars and Rick Barnes. 1,226 points and a bunch of rebounds. Heck of a player. Now Bats back on the floor, goes to work right away. Doesn't get the roll, August the rebound. Notre Dame has the starting backcourt in the game and an entirely new frontcourt. Beadshy, the freshman, in as well. Yeah. Grant, 22, must get involved. Right now he is uh, floating around out there, not taking any shots, not looking to drive. Here's Sherman. Quick release on the hook. Doesn't go. Council with the rebound. Quickly ahead to Fortune. Fortune attacks the basket. Mats can't bring it in, but Council runs it down. New shot clock for Providence. So far, Notre Dame, wrong guys shooting the basketball. 2 3 zone. Last time they tried to get the ball right to the center of it, and they do again. Ottens doesn't get it to drop. Goes for the rebound. So another shot clock. Providence owning the glass right now. Cotton tries it again. Too strong again. Notre Dame ball. When Notre Dame has gone zoned, no blockout responsibilities, hence offensive rebounding available for Providence. When they're in man to man, much less of that going on for Mike Bray's team. They block out pretty solidly. Bryce Cotton gets a rest. Grant loses it. Also by Goldsboro. Gets it to Fortune. Just like that, Cooley and Knight check into the scoring table. They'll be in there. And with Connaughton. There's Fortune in the corner. He drills it. That's his thing. Specialist, freshman, three-point shooter. Grant looking to get involved. The putback doesn't go. Council keeps it alive, dumps it down to Bats, rejected by August. Beachai with numbers, three on one, back to Beachai. Are you kidding me? August coming from nowhere. Wow. I didn't know that kid had that in him. Woo. Fans looking for a goaltend. The freshman out of Marlboro, Massachusetts. Depth is something you develop, just doesn't happen. Got to give guys minutes. That's the turnaround, and he hits. Is he ever going to miss? Wow. Now the question is, was that an assist for Council? Oh, definitely. And he is the all-time leader here, passing Ernie D. 663 career assists. It's a home game, man. That's got to <laughs> be an assist. It's a hockey rink, too. They like those hockey assists, but certainly that one was clean. Beat shot for three. Too strong. Grant tips it back to Atkins. Atkins 0 for 2. Grant's taking one shot. 
Notre Dame will not win if that continues. Good hustle by Goldsboro to knock that one away. The energy of the Friars is frightening right now. They are everywhere. White shirts hustling. Guys get beat and they come from behind. They are playing confidently because of those three wins in a row. Energy level very, very good. Now Cooley back in there with Knight. Connaughton penetrates, gets it back out. Connaughton shovels it over to Knight. That's off. Cooley keeps it alive, but Goldsboro has been Johnny on the spot here. Johnson gets another high screen, kicks it over to Fortune. They need to double him. Cooley a little too aggressive there with the forearm in the back. A mock cheer here from the Friar faithful as the whistle goes their way. Well, I think that Notre Dame is making a mistake on their coverage of bats. He needs to be double teamed when he catches the ball close to the basket. That rims out. Goldsboro again. Cooley knocks that one away. Knight to beat shot. Gotcha. Took a step. Well, you mentioned Vincent Council is a great passer. We're going to show you the historic assist right here. Vincent Council, Ernie D. Gregorio, where are you? I just broke your record. And that's the recipient. There he is, Ernie D. on hand. There's a uh, turn back the clock kind of feel here today in Rhode Island as we take a look at our Capital One Cup Impact Performance of the Week and Vincent Council making Providence history. With pink sneakers yet, right here. Nice easy pass inside. A classic assist, a touch pass. Mark it down, it was a touch pass to Vax. Made some history today, congratulations, Vincent. There you see, 663 career assists. The Ernie D. loyalists will point out that Ernie D. did not play as a freshman and averaged 7.7 .7 a game. One of the all-time greats, not just here in New England, but in college basketball, he and Marvin Barnes. With Dave Gavin, his bats gets loose. He's in double figures already with 10. Providence enjoying its largest lead here in the first half. Grant back out there after a short rest. Pulls up, draws the whistle. He'll go to the line. Well, Council, after breaking the record, gets whacked right in the face. Rats having a great day today. He breaks loose, free on the switch. Nobody picks him up. Little miscommunication with the Irish there. Grant finally on the scoreboard. Very important for him to get involved in this game from the Irish perspective. Keep in mind against Louisville, those are his numbers. He had 12 points in 26 seconds against Louisville, and they were able to force that into overtime. And of course, longest game in the Big East regular season history. Even though the game went on to five overtimes, it's hard to get lost in the shuffle. There's a whistle on the screen. Off the ball. That was a Reggie Miller esque performance the way he took that one. <laughs> I'll tell you what, he was fantastic in that game. His brother, of course, plays at uh, Syracuse University. He, a uh, power forward and an outstanding young freshman. The sons of Harvey Grant started Clemson and played in the NBA. This is the Big East Network game of the week, number 21, Notre Dame. Looking for its 10th straight win over Providence, but the Friars, who have won three straight, have a six-point lead. And McEnany along with Bob Wenzel. Grant picks up the dribble. Grant down the pool, 15 on the shot clock. And here's August. August drives. And one opportunity for the freshman. I'll tell you what, he showed some stuff in this game so far. August had a spectacular block, and now he has a nice drive there. What's happening with Providence's defense, they are guarding the perimeter tightly. When the ball goes inside, they do not double. 
Notice right here, Jack Cooley wasn't doubled. So as a result, you have some driving lanes available. They are gambling that the inside players can't beat them. They want to do a job on Atkins and Grant in this game. So far, it's working. The old school three-point play makes it a three-point game. Cotton, Dunn, Council, Bats, and Goldsboro for the home team. Notre Dame sitting in that 2-3 zone. Here's Bats. Gets Cooley up in the air. Ten yeah. points. Five of seven from the field for Bats. He is confident. His teammates confident in him. Notre Dame still not doubling him. The reigning Big East Player of the Week for that 25-point performance against Cincinnati. Grant throws it up. August wasn't ready to go for it, but he brings it in. Under 10 to shoot. Grant keeps the dribble alive. Then he passes it out to August with two. He gets rid of it. Well off. They stop on the play. They give up, and Atkins brings it in after the pass from Cooley. Providence heard the buzzer for the shot clock. You play the whistle as a player. You don't play any buzzers. Under five and a half left in the first half. Notre Dame down by five. Grant has been passive here in the first half. Gets it to Cooley, who can't handle it, still loose. Off the glass, well too strong. That goes against August. It's about time you discovered why Puerto Rico does it better. Log on to seepuertorico.com and discover Puerto Rico for yourself. Well, last play was a good example of Grant not taking a shot. He drives into the middle of the lane. He's got a shot at the basket. He's six feet away from the basket. Instead, passes to four feet to Cooley. A pass like that's not going to get anything done. Cooley heads to the bench. Sherman checks in for Mike Bray. Goldsboro loose on the baseline. Another rejection from August. This time, Grant passes again to Sherman, and he hits. And Ed Cooley takes a timeout. We saw Grant's assist numbers in Big East play. He draws the attention of the defense and finds the open man, but Zach August on the defensive end. Second big block of the game for the freshman, and he has erased two sure layups. So his contribution, big time for Mike Gray right now. Coming Notre up. Dame is ranked. They are near the top of the league. Georgetown won last night. They're in first place. Providence has won several games. They are now not near the bottom. And you can see the energy in the Friars in this game. They are fired up to play Notre Dame. Friars already surpassing the total of Big East wins from a year ago, five and seven. There's a look at the standings. You see Georgetown with that win last night, holding on in Cincinnati. Otto Porter, best player in the league. Most versatile player in the league. Done for three. Off. August goes up high, but he can't bring it in. Atkins does. Nice play by Council. Now numbers the other way for Providence, and Grant reaches in. Well, Grant intentionally fouled. Not, it's not an intentional foul, but he made a solid play there. That was going to be an easy layup. Smart play by Grant. That's only his first foul. Council is controlling the tempo of this game for Providence. He's doing a very good job of speeding it up when they have an opportunity and slowing it down when they don't. Very intelligent play by the senior in this game. Out of Brooklyn, New York. Bats off the glass. He has 14 of Providence's 25. Grant the step back three. August the rebound. Some people might say that's not a good quality shot, but I like it. He needs to force some shots up to get some rhythm. Under four to play now. And he loses it. Hatton with the turnover. Up ahead to Council, throws it up. Wow! What an adjustment in midair by Bryce Cotton. Second lob of the game to Cotton. They appreciate him. And 
Dunn with the foul near midcourt. Bryce Cotton, one of the smallest guys in the league, finds the lob. Council to Cotton. They're picking it. 23rd, Connecticut at DePaul. Connecticut is the spoiler in the Big East this year. Can't go to the Big East tournament. Can't go to the NCAA tournament. They can determine who does. Kevin Ollie doing a great job getting that team to play fired up despite no motivation to postseason play and Knight continues his big afternoon. Well, that's the reason that they're so fired up. Their last four or five games are their entire season to them. They're not going anywhere afterward. So Connecticut should be the most team that's fired up in these late season games. Their regular season games are their motivation. Council picks up his dribble, off balance shot, Knight with the rebound. Classic example, he was looking to pass first, then shot. Always look to shoot first, then pass. Grant looks to shoot there, it's wild, but Cooley another putback. Council quickly the other way. He'll go to the line. Well, Jack Cooley doing what he normally does, which is go to the offensive glass. Grant trying to make something out of nothing. Cooley there. He's yelling also to the ball boy to mop up the floor as he goes down. He sells popcorn at halftime. And speaking of halftime on the Big East Network Geico Halftime Report, we'll take a look at some of the Player of the Year candidates in the Big East and the country as we break down some of the Wooden Award finalists and, of course, highlights from the first half here between the Friars and the Irish. Providence has not beaten Notre Dame since 2004. It was in South Bend. Ryan Gomes led the way in that one with 25. Donnie McGrath had 16. Nine years ago. Atkins, Beachside, Grant, Cooley, and Knight out there for Notre Dame. We approach the two-minute mark. Here's Grant. Jump out on him. Bullet pass into Cooley. Oh, you kidding me? Wow, that was bullet pass. I'm not sure a lot of guys could have caught that basketball. Great pass, nice hands by Cooley. Cooley has eight as it's a two-point ball game. Bats has 14. Here he is, Bats. Double. Gets back out to Council with 20 to shoot. First time they doubled him all game. He had to give it up. Fortune pulls the trigger. Drills it. Three-point shooter. Started early in the year. Coming off the bench now. Understands his role. He hit five in one game against Villanova, so he can heat up. Two for two in this game. No movement. Four guys standing still for the Irish. A minute left. Grant thought about it. Drops it off to Knight. Can't hit there. Dunn flies in for the rebound. Ooh. Dunn's a McDonald's All-American. Starting to play better. Council splits the zone, but Cooley knocks that away. And Mike Bray. Takes a timeout with 44.1 left to play. I would not advise getting in the way of this pass. If you do, it might knock your head off. It was so quick. Cooley's got great soft hands. He makes the play. And at the other end, fortune from deep. Nothing but the bottom of the net for the freshman. Seen the impact fortune and don't have made in this game. You take a look at Ed Cooley. Those two along with... Ricky Lato, who's sitting out this year, part of the number six recruiting class, according to ESPN Recruiting Nation. So when you hear, talk about a coach changing the culture, obviously you'd have to talk about the current team, but certainly recruiting, another big part of that. Oh, no doubt about it. You know, if Lito was uh, available this year, he's ineligible because of academics, he would make a gigantic impact. He would be the leading candidate for freshman of the year in the conference. He's the best player on the team, and he's not playing. A local product from here in Providence. Played his prep ball at South Kent in Connecticut. 
So let's see what the Irish do out of the timeout. The game plan so far has been pounded inside. Ten on the shot clock. Now Grant. Grant drives, pulls up, gets it to beat shot for three. Does not drop. Cooley can't come up with that rebound, and Providence will hold for one. Providence, good advantage right here. They will have the ball to start the second half as well. Goes Bruno. He's going to have to shoot it. Why not? <laughs> Look at the smile on his face. <laughs> The big man from England shoots one from London. Deep. Nowhere to go. I'll jack it up. Thank you very much. That ties the largest lead of the half. The whole crowd was begging him to let it fly. Look at that. Money. What a way to end the first 20 minutes for the Friars. Looking to make it four straight for the first time since 2004. They carry the play over the number 21 Fighting Irish in Notre Dame. We've already seen Providence history as Vincent Council has passed Bernie D. Will they knock off the Irish for the first time since 2004? Everything going Ed Cooley's way, including the buzzer beating three. We're back with the halftime report from the dump after this. Notre Dame, 30. Team in the league right now coming up donuts at the Dunkin' Donuts Center behind the arc. Yeah, a zero for four is never going to get it done in Notre Dame's system of play. 12 assists on 14 baskets for Providence. Mr. Grant, number 22, and Mr. Atkins, number zero, are going to have to get going in this game. They are 0 for 5 from the field. They average 25 points a game between them. Notre Dame has not made an outside shot in the game. All 11 baskets in the paint. That's where the Friars go to start the second half. Bats now has 16. And it is now a double-figure lead for the Friars, their largest of the ball game. Give Chris Dunn, defending Atkins right here, a lot of credit. He is doing a great defensive job on the perimeter. The 6'3 freshman. There's that matchup right now. Atkins goes to his left. Too strong off the glass. Cooley can't put it back in. Bats with the rebound. Council is quick. Bats pulls up. Connaughton with the rebound. So, Coach Wenzel, if you're Mike Gray, how do you get your guards involved? Well, you got to set screens for them, and I think Grant has to move without the basketball better. Right now, they used to be a four out, one in. And you can see Knights very, very involved, obviously, right here, okay? Which is a good thing. But in order to win games in the Big East Conference, you must have balance on offense between inside and outside game, and they do not have it. And I think Ed Cooley's plan, frankly, Eamon, in this game is we are going to defend the perimeter tightly. We are not going to double in the post. We're going to let them score in the post, but we're going to take away the three. And I think it's a very good formula for success, if you can do it, against Notre Dame. This Big East game is being produced and distributed on 40 Big East Network affiliates throughout 17 states. And LaDante Henton hit from one of those out of states on that one. <laughs> it's now an 11-point Friar lead. Knight. To beat shy, who's in for Connaughton. Tonight, open look for Grant. He takes it, doesn't drop. Off Cooley. They finally get a clean shot for Grant, and because he hasn't taken many shots in the game, way off target. So some quick substitutions here in the second half by Mike Bray. Sherman in for Cooley. Again, Notre Dame's last two games, both going to overtime. One of the five variety against Louisville, and then. An easy one overtime-wise against the ball at home. There's Bat squaring up on Sherman. Locks it down. He's got the mid-range game. He's smiling coming down on the floor. He is in the proverbial zone. 
18 already. Danger time here for the number 21 team in the country on the road. Nice look to Sherman, who brings it in, and he'll go to the line. Sherman, transfer, Michigan State. Fats dealing from mid-range. The ball and head fake give him some space. And right here, the long pass inside to Sherman. Notice how he protects the ball with his left arm, sticks his left arm out at the defender so he can't get it blocked. Sherman became kind of a cult figure a week ago with the 17 points and five overtimes against Louisville after not scoring in regulation. This is done. Now Cotton, open behind the arc. Can't lose him. Example of proper balance. Last time, Bat scores inside. This time, Cotton from outside. He has 10. Notice how the perimeter guys are out here defending the three. They don't worry about getting in the paint. They slap it away from Beachside. Numbers for Council. He's got the trailer over to Cotton, who pulls up for three. Short. Ed Cooley says slow up after Council runs down the rebound. Goes against Notre Dame. Well, there's the guards for Notre Dame. Not doing too much in this game. Grant has five assists, but they need scoring from those guys. You watch the next time that they are on offense. The white shirts will defend the three, not bother about helping inside. A look for Dunn. And Connaughton goes up for the rebound. They have a smaller unit out there right now for Notre Dame with August and Connaughton. And here's August, the freshman. And they call him for steps. Six turnovers now for the Irish. Checks over to Coach Cooley to get the play. Irish pick up man. That's attacks the freshman. Another block for the rookie. He has three. A rare numbers opportunity for the Irish. Grant. And one. On the drive, take the hit, keep on ticking. It's the Fire fans enjoying an 11-point lead on the number 21 team in the country. We mentioned Notre Dame has yet to hit from behind the arc, but uh, Providence usually locked down out there. Yeah, they're very good defensively defending the three-point shot. They do give up a lot of inside shots, however, and here you can look at it. Notre Dame leads the conference in percentage from three at 39. Providence defense leads from three at 29. So something's got to give in that situation. And so far, the Providence defense is doing the job. And on the other end, the Friars have hit seven behind the arc. Now Grant goes to the line looking to complete the three-point play. In case you're doing the math, that's 21 to nothing from behind the arc. Hence the big lead, right? Grant can't hit. Council with the rebound. Dunn, Council, Henton, Bats, and Cotton out there for Ed Cooley. They go into Henton inside. And he hits. His first basket, I think. He's their leading rebound and not been involved too much in this game so far. Providence is highly motivated and very energetic in this game. The Irish look tired to me, a little lethargic. Maybe the overtime games have a lot to do with that. I think Providence's D has a great deal to do with it. Good example. That's a last touch by the Irish. Lackadaisical pass right there. 
There's the overtime we're talking about, Eamon, and uh, I know because of all these overtime games, your alumni dues have increased at Notre Dame. But three out of four of their games in overtime, and two of those overtimes against DePaul, which is sort of a bottom feeder in the league. I think they're fatigued. Right. I'm not going to Chicago anytime, anytime soon with you, Bob, after that last comment. We're back to Providence <laughs> after this. Third day, Seton Hall visits the Young Center, and then it's Connecticut at DePaul. And a good one in Connecticut. Huskies with a one-point lead on the Wildcats. Cotton off the screen. Short. What a tip-in by Henry. He now has seven. Notre Dame on the road, down by 15. Largest deficit for the Irish, Atkins. Chips away at that. First basket of the game for Eric. Council 0 to 60 automatically. Gets it back from Cotton. Mismatch down low for Bats. Quickly doubled, he loses it. They have not doubled him normally in this game. That's the second time they've doubled him. Both times they created a turnover. Cooley comes up with the loose ball. 25 to shoot, throws that one away to Council, but Connaughton keeps it alive. Grant finds Cooley to the right. Doesn't drop. Atkins goes for the steal. Leaves done open. Dunn penetrates to Henton. And the foul. Invisible in the first half, ever present in the second half is LaDante Henton. And he gets it without any dribbles, all over the offensive glass. The drive by Cotton. Notice how he switches that ball to his left side so it can't be blocked by Cooley. Nice play for the undersized power forward. He is a guy that can heat up quickly. He had 37 against Brown earlier this year, including 24 straight points. So he's come to life here in the second half to join the party. Do the Irish have a run in him on the offensive end? Cooley back to the bench. They dump it down to Sherman. Council knocks it out of bounds. You know, you watch a game like this and you say, how can Providence, with the season they've had, beat Notre Dame and be beating Notre Dame by this many points? Well, they've developed during the course of the season, and that happens. Ed Cooley has done a good job. Remember, Council missed eight games with a shoulder injury. Dunn was out for long periods of time. But this is the first time that they have really been at full strength and have had a few games under their belt that way. Ed Cooley called his lineup the Iron Seven at the beginning of the year. Yeah, right. At the start, walk off against Penn State. Atkins runs that one down. The other team that's improving as the season goes on is Pittsburgh. He shot short for three. Donathan with an offensive rebound. And he'll get called for an offensive foul. This game is being produced and distributed by ESPN Regional Television Incorporated. From the Dunkin' Donuts Center in Providence, Rhode Island. Number 21, Notre Dame down by 16 to the hometown Friars as Vincent Council walks it up. You talk about the speed of Vincent Council and then you say Vincent Council walking it up. That is very, no, that, I mean that's very instructive because he knows when to go and when not to go. Senior, experienced, intelligent player. Already today he's become Providence's all-time assist leader. He most likely, when it's all said and done, lead the Big East Conference in assists. Trying to pass Sherman Douglas as Henton gets rejected by Knight. He's got seven assists and one turnover in the game. You love that stat and you love that ratio. So that gives him 420 in Big East games. Sherman Douglas, the former Syracuse star, the leader, with 426. One on the shot clock. Henton can't. Would have been good if it goes. Long second here in Providence. Down to Sherman. The fake and then the bucket. There's 
Cotton, quick release on the three. Quick releases, right. Under-recruited player. Arizona to Providence. He now has 13. Here's Atkins. Look at answer. No. Goldsboro the rebound. Fan favorite here in Providence. Quickly the other way. Cotton feeling it. Why not? Everyone's standing here at the dunk. He has 16. It's a 19-point lead. Atkins rejected by Fortune. Three on one. Council up to Fortune. He can't finish. So we go the other way. Atkins to beat shy. One more. Back and forth we go here. Vincent Council deciding time to slow it up. Now he attacks, pulls up. Money. Fatigued by nine guys other than Council. That was an easy one. So Mike Gray decides it's time to get Jack Cooley back out there. Sherman up and under. He'll go to the line. The Irish the leading scorer in the league, knocking them in from deep. From one side and the other. The quick trigger by Bryce Cotton. To the Dunkin' Donuts Center where Providence is all over number 21 Notre Dame, 58-39. And Bob, the last few years we've been reminded that it's not how you start, it's how you finish, especially in this conference. Two years ago, Connecticut wins the national championship. They're 500 in the league. Last year, Louisville, 10 and eight in the league. They get to the final four. Who are the likely candidates this year? Georgetown and Pittsburgh are my estimates. Now, you got to think Syracuse has a shot. Louisville has a shot also. But those two teams unranked early and are playing the best in the league right now. Pittsburgh with a huge game today against Marquette. Georgetown winning on the road last night in Cincinnati as Sherman misses them both. Henton with a rebound. The Irish are not a team that can, can come from deep, deep, deep behind. Now, they're making an attempt here. They're picking up higher than they have all, all game. But Providence has quick perimeter guys. It's going to be tough. Mike Bray continues to rest Jack Cooley. Again, they play Pittsburgh on Monday, and they played basically five games in the last four. If you talk to their coaches about all the overtimes, is Cotton breaking off the crossover. But he can't complete it. Henton. Rebounding machine. Offensive board work. Blue collar guy. And not coincidentally, from Lansing, Michigan. The backup is pretty. This ain't pretty, but it's effective. Big stuff from LaDante Hare, huh? Gotta love a guy like this. You mentioned Lansing, the same high school that produced one Irvin Magic Johnson, Eastern High School. All 12 of his points coming in the second half. And all on inside plays like that. The second leading rebounder in the Big East behind Cooley, coming in at eight a game. All Providence right now, the biggest lead of the game once again. Grant pulls up, short. Council head up, quickly looking to attack. He keeps it himself. Atkins, he answers by drawing the foul. Look at the body language of Eric Atkins right here. Holding his shorts, head down. Now this guy's a great player, one of the best in the league. And he has looked tired all day to me. And his performance way subpar by his own standards. Short there, 102 minutes logged in the last two games. 
Mike Gray saying the most important guy getting on the flight here was the team masseuse, Dr. Jerry Offerth, <laughs> trying to keep everybody loose and ready to go. When you add that up with a quick Providence team that's playing with confidence, he Bad blueprint for the Irish. That's. We spoke of magic earlier. That looked like a little baby hook. He has 20. Can he go back to back? Big East player of the week. Grant in the paint over to Atkins. Backcourt starting to come alive for Mike Bray. He calls a timeout. Well, that is typical Irish basketball right there. Grant and Atkins playing drive and dish between them. That's the first three of the game for the Irish. Normally about seven a game for Mike Bray's team. Cross court pass gets the defense to move. The dribble penetration gets the defense to collapse. And when that happens, Eric Atkins can drill it. Last possession, Eric goes coast to coast, uses his body to shield the defense but they have been few and far between for the Notre Dame backcourt. Notre Dame missing its first eight from behind the arc before Atkins connected on that one. That's big time right there, huh? The three-point shot, a weapon for Providence in this game. Coach Cooley changing the culture. That all starts with winning. Right now looking to win four straight for the first time since 2004 when Tim Welsh's club did it. It's also the last Providence team to make it into March Madness. Four and 14 in the league last year. Five and seven right now, way ahead of schedule. Donovan jumps out on Cotton. Now Fortune, eight to shoot. Connaughton gets calls for the bump. Connaughton has been invisible in this game also. Had a great game in the Louisville game. 16 boards in that game. This guy's a terrific athlete, also a great baseball player at Notre Dame. Hall of Fame baseball columnist Peter Gammon says that uh, Connaughton will be the most scouted pitcher in the Cape Cod League this summer. Wow. 40 strikeouts in just over 45 innings pitched last year for the Irish. That's quickly ahead to Atkins. That's made it tougher. Good hustle pays off. The body language and the expression on Atkins' face says it all right now for Notre Dame. Eight minutes left here in regulation. Council comes up with it. Atkins on the ball. Dunn thought about it, gives it up, now 10 to shoot. Gets a screen from Bats. Shakes and bakes. Strong. Cooley with the rebound. Grant tonight. Tonic can't come up with a bounce pass. Off to her name. It's been that kind of an afternoon in New England for Connaughton and the Irish. Well, if Scott Martin was playing, maybe things would be different. The 6'8 senior out for the seventh game in a row. Good outside shooter. His season might be done. Closing in on Big East win number six on the season. Time now to take a look at our defender of the game, brought to you by America's Navy, a global force for good. A memorable day for Vincent Council on both ends of the floor. Indeed, eight rebounds and two steals for Vincent. The senior has passed Ernie D. Gregorio as the leading assist man in the illustrious history of Providence College. And as you mentioned earlier, Eamon, likely to become the leading assist man in the history of this great conference when he passes Sherman Douglas later. That is Ernie D. Gregorio, a magician with the basketball when he played here at Providence College. Lenny Wilkins, first guy ever to be inducted into the Hall of Fame, both as a player and a coach. Also a Providence graduate, Jim Laranega, the guy who's doing magic at Miami right now, also a player here at Providence. 
Rebound for the Friars. Done. We'll go to the line. And to play tack on to that, Rick Pitino, a finalist for the Hall of Fame, of course, here at Providence, leading to the Friars to the Final Four back in 1987 with Billy the Kid. Yeah, Billy Donovan now at Florida being... Uh, How's that working out? He's doing okay down there, right? <laughs> Two national championships, right? Do you know that he's the dean of the coaches in the Southeastern Conference? That's pretty amazing, isn't it? It is. I still think of him as a 25-year-old guy. <laughs> Unbelievable. I still shaking my head reading the Notre Dame game notes that Mike Bray's the second longest tenured coach in the Big East now. Behind Jim Beheim, right? Yep. Speaking of Jim Beheim, Providence will go to Syracuse and two Rutgers in their next two games. Grant knocks down the mid-range game. That Syracuse game will be a rematch of an orange victory. 72-66 here on January 9th. Bryce Cotton had 24 in a losing effort. Well, the Big East Conference is likely to put seven teams in the NCAA tournament, maybe eight. As you look down the left-hand column, the one that can't go is Connecticut at 7-4 and four and 17-6. And, and look on the right-hand column, St. John's is still an outside possibility to make the tournament. Of course, the Big East Championship will be played March, early March, uh, at Madison Square Garden. It is sold out from March 12th to the 16th at the Garden. And there you see Connecticut playing very, very well indeed. What a backcourt they have, huh? This Shabazz Napier and Ryan Boatwright. Let's see, we get you up to date on some out of town scores. The way Providence is playing, I don't think anyone's going to want to see them at the Garden because they could be that team to leapfrog St. John's and maybe be that eighth team on the board. A lot of basketball left to be played, of course. Notre Dame will play at Pittsburgh on Monday, then they get a rest. Rick Five on the shot clock. He counts it, it's called for steps. You mentioned Rick Pitino, and, and after their defeat of Georgetown, uh, of St. John's the other night, he was quoted in his press conference, and he just brought this up out of the blue, that he thought Pittsburgh and Providence were the two teams that were playing the best right now in the Big East. High praise from the former coach. There's Connaughton looking for his first three of the ball game. And Cooley gets called for a hold. Typically when the shot is in the air in the Big East Conference, there is hand-to-hand -hand combat under the goal. That time Mike Bray's star center gets called for a little push. So the Friars in the bonus will send bats to the line. 67% shooter from the line. Already has 20 points for the third straight game. Can't make it 21. Cooley grabs the rebound. Grant, bounce pass to Cooley. And he hits. Full court pressure, do they have the energy? I have my doubts about that, especially when you have a guy like Council out there handling the duties. They lose fortune. And he cannot get the friendly roll at home. Under six minutes to play. Notre Dame has to get going, and they have to do it quickly if they want to make this one interesting. Donathan tries again behind the arc. Off cooling. All right, Coach, let's talk about season managing. You played a five-overtime game, an overtime game. You're here on the road, and you have pit on Monday. You're down by 17 with 547 left to play. Yeah, you're painting a not good scenario. Uh, I mean, what, at what point do you have to start? Do you ever turn your attention to Monday night here in this one? Well, you know, I'm, I'm, you have to respect your players and their ability to get after things. Uh, but you're right. The Saturday-Monday gig is a tough thing in the Big East Conference especially with Pittsburgh, the hottest team in the league coming in. Not going to be easy. Henton down low, being guarded by Connaughton. Now doubled, and he loses it. Atkins looking to get ahead of Council. And he gets called for a push-off. No, they call it on Council. The substitutions in the front court have been multiple for Mike Gray. Ed Cooley not to worry about that call. If it was a close game, he'd be complaining. 
right here. But what Mike Ray is doing, and, and to answer your question, I think the big guys are getting plenty of blows and, and, and they'll be okay. He really doesn't have a lot of guards on this team, so he's got Grant out now and Beachside is, is playing the two guard, which is really not his position. He's trying to rest his players a little bit for the Monday night game you're referring to. It's not easy though. Cooley's numbers much, much better in the non-conference than they've been in the conference, even though they're good in Big East games. Playing against bigger, stronger, tougher defenses and teams that know him well. Now under five to play in regulation. Ten on the shot clock for Atkins. Out to August. Into the paint. This one goes against the Irish. That's a little inexperience there. August has played a good game. I've been impressed with him. Has not played a lot of minutes this year, but that one was ill-advised. So now Coach Bray sends Grant and Cooley back out there. Yeah, he, he's, he's back and forth, right? Cooley's got a double-double, which is his 18th of the year in this game. But it has not been an impressive show for him either. Ten. All the credit to the Friars, right? Cooley with 10 and 10. Locking horns with bats again down low on the block. That's where Council's looking right now. No whistle letting him play. Providence turnover. You notice on that play, Cooley forced bats away from the paint. But bats doesn't mind that. You know, guys who are really close to the basket players, that drives them nuts when that happens. But bats is a guy, when he's a little bit off the lane, he, I think he's more effective in the mid range than he is right on top of the basket. Now Grant. Cooley. Left hand. Strong rebound from Henton. Knight jumps out on Council, gets it over to Henton. Under four minutes to play. Providence looking for their first four-game winning streak since 2004. And Knight gets called for the foul. The Friars in complete control at home. They lead it 65-48. Today's Big East basketball game is brought to you by PNC Bank, for the achiever in you. America's Navy, a global force for good. USAA, proudly serving the financial needs of the military, veterans, and their families. The new Buick Enclave, it's smart, made beautiful. And by Puerto Rico, it's about time you discovered why Puerto Rico does it better. Former Friar great and current Charlotte Bobcat scout being inducted into the Providence Hall of Fame, Dickie Simpkins. What a moment for Dickie, the Friar center back in the early 90s. Time now to take a look at our net play of the game. Dickie deciding to turn in the microphone for a pen and paper. <laughs> I'll tell you, with he and Bats together, that would be a formidable front line if he had any eligibility left. What a great day for Providence. This guy makes history by surpassing Ernie D. Gregorio, Mr. Council, as the leading assist guy in the history of the school, wearing pink shoes, doing it. And of course, they are beating the Irish, and that has not happened in a long, long time. And they look very, very good. Quick. Everybody on the team fulfilling their role. February 24, 2004 in South Bend, the last time Providence Got the better of Notre Dame. Tim Welsh, the coach. Ryan Gomes, the superstar. He had 25. Donnie McGrath with 16 as well. At this time of year, February, as the season winds down, you know, five or six more games in most conferences, you try to focus and think about the teams that are improving during the course of the year. Some teams are improving. Some teams are staying level. Rick Pitino is a coach that always has his teams play well at the end of the year in this conference. And of course, the Friars really playing the best that they played all year long in this particular game. 
And earlier in this game, you mentioned that big three that Cotton hit down in Villanova. That was a game that if that one got away from him after the overtime loss here to Connecticut, you're looking at four straight losses. Yep. Instead, you get that game, and you turn the season around. Yeah. Confidence builder, right? Then they beat Cincinnati here. Then they win at South Florida, score 51 in the second half. Cooley runs down the rebound, gets it back to Conant, and Grant, the long three from Warwick, doesn't go. You mentioned that South Florida turnaround. Coming out of the locker room on fire, scoring the first 17 points of the second half. Well, Mike Bray has decided to go deep into his bench right now. He's concerned about Monday night, as you mentioned before. So he's going to get some guys out of the game now. Three ready to check in at the table. Make it four. Sherman joins the party. Hatton from behind the arc. Bats brings it in. We mentioned the last victory back in 2004. That was in South Bend, the last home victory, 1998. This is why you see the fans start to come to their feet and make some noise in appreciation of the effort they've seen here this afternoon from Cotton and his mates. Grant, another long one. Short again. The legs just aren't there. Council quickly ahead to Cotton. They have legs. That could be your exclamation point as Mike Bray comes almost all the way out to midcourt to take a timeout and get some new bodies out there for the Irish. What an afternoon, and there it is. That's the way it's gone right now today for the Irish. Council delivers. Cotton, spectacular. The guards doing it for Providence. Now our in-the-net play of the game brought to you by Bass Pro Shops, and it's the Bats edition. <laughs> Kadeem, 14 in the first half. They chose not to double him. That was a mistake, because when he has space in the lane, he delivers. Mid-distance player, big numbers in this game for Kadeem Bats. 20 in this game, four out of the last five games, 20 or better for this inside player. And Notre Dame had been able to handle him in the past, just six points total in his last two meetings with Jack Cooley and the Irish, but that's not the story here today at home as Providence breaking through for the first time in nine years against the Irish. Ten assists for Vincent Council. Awesome day for him. Bats, of course, 20 and five. And the three-point shooting not there for Notre Dame. Credit the defense of Providence and tired legs from three out of the last four games being overtime for the Irish. So this is Patrick Crowley bringing it up for Notre Dame. Junior out of California. He's out there with Austin Burgett, who has the ball right now. And now Sherman. Almost picked off by Cotton. And now Ed Cooley. Well, up to the bench as well. Gone and Bats, and Bats gets a well-deserved hand and a hug from his coach. Coming on strong. Sherman picks up his dribble. Back to the right. Stay here. Stay with Notre Dame. Gets it in the beach side. This is Crowley. Over to Burgett. Now August. Beach side goes and gets it. He'll take a three from straight away. Sherman and August knock it away from each other. Council looks like he can play all day. Here's a three. And Council. The fastest man of the ball all day long, another three. And Crowley gets the rebound. This is August in the open floor. And the council gets called for the foul. So 
What a day for Vincent, huh? Ten assists. So now Fortune and Goldsboro are onto the floor. Cotton and Henton. Call it a day. Ed, you got to get Vincent out for an ovation here. August hits the free throw. Cotton with 20, Henton with 13. Henton coming to life in the second half as the Friars ran away in this one from Notre Dame. August hits them both. Now Council walks it up. Bryce Kofain out there as well for the Friars. Under a minute to play. Council for three. August the rebound. Up ahead to Sherman. Council will let him go. Council's going to be the closer and finish this one out. He has nine rebounds. 11 assists to go along with seven points, so an all-around effort. And Cooley points to the student section in the crowd here. There's a six-second difference here. Packed crowd. The home team did not disappoint. And the senior had a terrific, terrific game. A memorable afternoon for him individually and the program. 1.8 left. Mike Gray wants to get it over with. He's going to shake hands right now. And they will dribble it out. So quite a Saturday afternoon of basketball for that man's program. Vincent Council makes Friar history. And the Friars knock off Notre Dame for the first time since 2004. They have won four in a row for the first time since 2004. The Friars win it big. When we return, we will talk to the head coach, Ed Cooley, after his club knocks off Notre Dame 71-54. to 54.